Howdy, Beefalo Bart here, and welcome. I shall teach them. Has Beefalo Bart gone mad? Screw him with Paragon assets? Really? Okay, so not everything is completely as I want it to be for right now, but, you know, you see the melee, I mean, you're, you're talking about the damage is only being done by the end where the blade is, so if they're right here up in your face, you can't actually hit them. I'll work around that and worry about that later, but as you can see, whenever you hit them, you get a spark emitter, when they die, they do an animation and they despawn and have a nice little particle effect and there's a constant stream of spawns and right now I've got it set to two and made a custom spawner system for you know just dropping into a map all I gotta do is just drop it in and size the uh, the collision box or the, the box itself for however many that I want. So if I come over to, yes, I haven't cleaned up and organized my, my map yet. It looks like crap. I know, I know. So let's actually go back in here and play and look. He does his little startup deal and then can walk around. And these were the starter targets that I was just screwing around with. So you can hit them, get a spark emitter whenever you hit them. They die, they fall down, and after a few seconds, ten to be exact, thoop, they respawn. Hey, get off me! You do a random amount of damage between a certain number. So you may get a, a bad hit, or you may get a good hit. So with the sp spawn emitter, as you can see, it's right over here. It's sitting above the map, but in an area. Got all these emitters here for snow, which I think for right now what I need to do is just now, ass clown, dump those. Just so I can focus in on getting other things done before worrying about being pretty. And this is just a test map. This is not even close to being what the final map's going to look like. But was testing features and I wanted something besides just my normal test map. So, my minion spawner, whenever I have it selected, I have max spawned. I can change that from 2 to 4, or 40, or whatever I want. And then, whenever I go back in here I to play, hoped for a challenge. nothing at first, and then, poof. See, they start spawning into the map. And they will not spawn any more than what I said is the max. So, and you can see, they immediately start tracking and start heading towards me. And whenever all four of those are gone, you know, they'll just keep on spawning. If I kill one, then one more I'll spawn. So there'll always be at least four spawned into the map. No more. So two just died. And then there's one, and there's two. So no more will spawn. There, there is a spawn limit set, and that way you're not sitting here dealing with a continuous wave of spawns. And so far everything is replicated and working 99.9%. Um, with that, the, um, the one thing that's not spawning correctly is when they die, that little death... It's the actual respawn emitter, but... That emitter is is not working, and if I go in here and play, we're going to two and new pie window. So this is the client window here. You can see it's still a little bit jumpy. I still got to do a lot of refinements on the um, the replication on it. For some reason, the client's just weird. You can see you don't get the death emitter. All the other sounds for getting damaged and for um, the death stuff, they're all on the same line, but for some reason the emitter doesn't want to work. So 
That's something I'll fool with later on. For right now, it works. Everything is working that I want to work. It still needs refinements here and there. I shall teach them. Like the the damage portion of where the uh, the staff actually hits. But the spawner, I like the the particle effect when they spawn into the world. So you see something, they fall down and immediately start coming after you. And you always have a constant stream of things to kill. So that's just the first attack. I'll, I'll bring in some other attack styles. But you have to keep in mind, though, that um, his primary attack is going to be with this, this weapon. And you see, for some reason, I believe it's just because the the assets from Paragon were just never really optimized well. So you keep getting um, um, texture, or I guess it's over-streaming. See, you're not always getting a 100%. See, streaming pool over almost one gigabyte. And the only thing that's in here is, you know, very little, you know? You're talking about the two bridge sections, two little gaps right here, and, you know, this stuff. Very little is in here. So you can actually go to a test map, and this is where I'm actually using for testing out characters. Uh, I'm not sure if anybody's detecting a theme yet here. I but. had hoped for a challenge. So you can't move until you actually get done doing your thing here. And... With the um, the pawn sensing, it just you know if they they don't see you, they're not going to come after you. But if you get within their their sensing range, they will come after you. Again, very simple startup on this. Um, it works, but that texture streaming. Um, I'm still getting that in here. And this is just a freaking little nothing map. You've got a nav mesh bounds to, to help with the characters. I've got just these two characters, which I don't even need them in here. You know, I can get rid of those. I got these are just regular UE4 target dummies that I put in here just to initially test the, the damage systems Hardly worth my and time. animations and so forth. And then started bringing in the the minions. And for right now, it's just these minions. I will bring in some more, and some more enemies. And you see, these guys they fall over dead, and they'll respawn after a few seconds. I'm gonna redo the way that the the damage is actually done with the weapon, because right now it's it's not active until you're. You see, I can run the blade through these guys. Doesn't do anything. But whenever I actually do the swing, it's turning on an actual collision box that's attached to the weapon itself. And I do that because of, you know, just a simple mechanism. See, texture streaming pool over 880 megabytes. Why? Why is it over? I'm just using two characters from the Paragon stuff, and that's it. And just poorly optimized. That's one of the reasons why I dumped using these things to begin with, was they're really poorly optimized. So in the blueprint for the player character, it's still a jumbled up mess. Um, combo system is partially there. I don't have it fully replicated yet, but the, the primary attack, it's saving towards a, the primary, but still it goes to a primary damage array, which comes in through here. And it um, is set up to where when you're doing this, you're primary damage event is actually going to... Yes, it'll bother me that it's not lined up perfectly. But it goes through, it turns basically the blade on so that um, it runs this actually, this event here. Waits for a second and then turns it back off again. And I can probably refine this a bit more, but it's just to turn it on and off so that the damage is not always on. And since the animation looks like your character is moving slower but not stopping, all I did was, um, during the animation, I slowed your character down a little bit. And then the damage itself, it checks to see if the blade is on, which is replicated. 
it does the um, it casts to the character whatever you're actually hitting must be a character and it gets a reference to the blade location it plays a, the the whack sound whenever you actually hit it and then server apply damage I've got damage set between 25 and 50 and that's just so that you know I can adjust it I can play with that number right there yeah I mean I could do it a little bit different but that's just what I'm doing for now then the application of damage everything passes through on the um, the replication and then on begin play turns off your mouse cursor it temporarily suspends your movement while you're actually doing the um, the startup emote which is his intro and it ensures that you're turning off the damage on the blade right there at the start and then um, after five seconds of this doing its startup then it says okay now you can initiate movement and there you go not a lot else has gone in here you know I've got my escape menu functionality so whenever you actually are playing it you can hit escape and get the that little menu but that's all I've done with this guy and just save that because I moved some stuff the target dummy they're just stationary um, what I've done here is event any damage is you know whatever they actually take damage and what I've done with this is actually create um, custom events for what happens on death or when you just get hit and take an injury so all you're doing with event any damage is you're getting your health you're subtracting the damage from your health and setting that to your current health value it checks to see if it's equal to or less than zero if it's not zero or less then you do the injured but if it is over um, that or under that basically it performs a death animation or death sequence and with that your setting is dead and that is called up in the animation blueprint you have a reset feature here so that they can respawn so you can do this once and then it resets and then go back into it again but on death it plays the sound animation for him dying and after 10 seconds it plays the respawn emitter and resets the health and checks it to not dead anymore so it respawns and then on injured it does the um, the emitter for taking melee damage and I'm using the ones from Feng Mao so that um, I have something so I can spawn the emitter and the sound file when they actually take damage so that's all I did with them on the target dummies so that you know they're just I had hoped to something I can come in here and smack them with a stick a little bit and do some damage so a lot of this stuff can actually be applied towards other things come in here and just kick some butt these guys the way that they respawn as they're using the um, the respawner node that I created and it'll just keep on going I have it currently set at two but these guys they don't do anything but just stand there and, and take a beating the um, and I started working on the Raptor as well and he will actually go in and I will do him as a silver system I need to fix his stuff get rid of the original movement stuff I want him to only deal with um, looking for your player Let's see out of instinct I, I always use <laughs> on C pawn um, or the uh, or anything for my player is to be the player base that's no longer the um, the player character so I need to fix that really quickly and then he should work so cast to my player elf and now I can move that in here and this should fix him so I do this I can do this I haven't set up the death animations or sequences for the um, the raptor just yet but this will at least get him to track and for now it would just be a manual spawn so if hit play I shall teach them 
And then with the minions, I had to create my own animation blueprints and stuff. And you're not moving. What did I do wrong with you? I ask you a question. Why aren't you working? <laughs> so, cast to the elf player. AI move to. That's all good. I didn't put anything on, on the end of it there. Um, what did I do wrong? Um, the minion, I should put them in a separate folder. I created an animation blueprint and the spawner and their own individual thing. There's a lot of stuff going on here that needs to be rectified. Alright, spawn emitter attached. So on begin play, it should do that. Yeah, that's fine. Um, what the hell did I do on his? Um... Uh, I guess I could do the right one. So let's actually move this up a little bit so we got room for it. And then what we want to do here is AI move to location or actor. And we want this to be the goal actor. And the controller, we're going to have to do. Get AI controller, and from the Get AI controller, I'm going to plug in a reference to self here, so that that's that's what we're doing. So you can actually on the on C pawn, on request failed and on move finished. This is where you could like plug in. Okay, I want the this dude to attack or whatever, and then I would do the attack animations or sequences or whatever else. So let's see if you decide to Hardly want to work now. So we know the minions are going to spawn in correctly. They're going to see me and come after me. You're just being an asshole. Well, his death sounds are still working because, you know, that's the way that I had it set before. Um, use continuous goal tracking. Um, I know that he walks. His walking animation actually works. So, yeah. What the hell did I do wrong? Hmm. Acceptable radius. That's fine. I didn't change any of that. Let's look at his spawn sensing. That's 70. I mean, that's not a big deal. I mean,. It's just got his um, radius a little bit larger. I mean, 90 is what the default is. I mean, it's 90-degree plane on, on his visibility. So, yeah, that wasn't a problem. Character movement should still be fine. His walk speed is 600. I'll lock it down to 500, make him a little bit slower. He still is going to move faster than the player. But what did I do wrong here? He does. He gets damage, and he plays that that sound. I mean, that's not the current sound that I want to use. It was just a temporary. Um, on C pawn. Oh, pawn. Skull actor, and that's what I had on the other one. I only wanted it to trigger on the player, but I guess it's, you know, working on the other one, so what the I hell? Had hoped for a challenge. So let's see if he actually works now. If not, then I'll just, yeah, here we go. Eh, get away from me. Get away. Run away. So I'll set up a, a different kind of spawner for him as well, so that if you want him to, to spawn in, like I've got with the um, the regular minions, so what I'm going to do for now is, instead of this dorky sound that he plays, I'm just going to have him go away. We'll just delay for two seconds and then destroy actor. And that's pretty much what I was doing with the other ones. Um, 
just want him to despawn. I need to find his death animation and rig that in and set that up in his animation blueprint. And um, he is located in minions. Minions. And then scroll down. Actually, no. He's actually located in buff. And he is buff black. Now he has his own aim offset and blend spaces that comes with it but he didn't have an actual animation blueprint. So I actually created his own animation blueprint. Um, death. Well, he does have a death that I could use. So we'll run that and let's actually pause it. Most of the, um, the characters don't have a full death where they go all the way down and dead. So since he does have a dead pose, I'm going to go ahead and create that. And I'm just going to do create animation, current pose. And I'm just going to bring it up here and put it in my character animation folder for the raptor. And I'm going to call this dead underscore one. And click OK. And hit save. Now we actually have a death pose. And we, we know that we have a death animation. So in theory... We could set that 10 seconds, let him sit there for a while, um, and then go ahead and set that up in the animation blueprint. And let's go back up to the animation blueprint that I created. Animation, Raptor... I don't know why I created a separate um, blueprint just for his... Um, or an actual uh, blend space. We already had some. I don't know why I did that, but whatever. Um, so we want to cast two our raptor test and I want to get from our try get pawn owner drag over to here and all we're going to do is run this as a death so we want to get is dead and if it's true I am going to for now I'm going to create dead meat variable and then we want to set um, yeah for right now we just we're gonna do this and we're gonna do a despawn and then I'll create an actual spawner just for that particular um, enemy and then now that we have this established we can actually go into the atom graph our state machine and all we have is idle and run that's it I'll probably come back in here and completely remake this one later but we want to go ahead and because he should be stopped when we're attacking so for right now what I'll do is I'll just drag it off from here and I will create a new state and we're gonna call this death and when we're in our death state we have Uh, damn, where is this death back? That sounds good. We'll grab that one, throw it in here, connect that together, go back to our state machine, go to here, dead meat, yes. Go back to here, and let's go ahead and create a... We want to go from this state to a new state called dead... Yes, it's going to bug me if I don't put a capital letter on there. And I'm just going to go ahead and put that as our dead one. So he'll lay there and be dead. And to get to that state, we want to make sure that um, we're done doing the animation for our death animation. And... Yeah, every time I was doing this before, I kept putting in the, the greater than. It's actually less than that you need to put in there. And I was like, why the hell isn't this damn thing working? Because you're stupid. And then to go back to being alive again, just for now. Probably not going to use it, but we just want to get, is you dead meat? 
or is you not? And you is not. You want to not boolean and throw that in there. So if we want to just do a, a quick respawn, kill him, let him fall down, he be dead, and then just smack him around and bring him back up again, then that should work just fine. So if we go in here and I still got those crappy sounds in. I shall teach them. So these guys spawn. Oh, we didn't stop his movement. <laughs> yeah, we should probably do that. If any, any damage, set his dead to true. And right here, before we do anything else, let's grab character movement. Because he was still dead, but he was still tracking us. He was doing a really good job. So you set movement mode to... And it defaults to none, so that's good. So we just drop that in there, and drop that in there. Now, if we want to have him respawn, then after our 10 seconds, instead of destroy actor, then we can set health back to 100. And then, shit, come on over here. And we want to go ahead and set is dead to false. So after our 10 second wait, we're going to reset our health and tell him to not be dead anymore. And we can actually go back in, add particle effects and other cool shit on top of that, hardly but worth my time. definitely hardly worth my time right now. So, and now he's dead. And get away from me, bastard. You too. Get away from me. Ugh. And see, he's back alive again. But is he going to pawn sense? No. So, and that's the problem you run into when you do it this method. It's because whenever you're respawning, you're just changing a variable. And for some reason, pawn sensing does not turn back on again. And I don't know if you can do it to where... Pun sensing, you know. What do you do there? I mean, you could. I'm sure there's a way of actually re-triggering it there, but I am just going to go ahead and, for now, I'm going to destroy actor. So he disappears, and we'll take a look at the spawner system. So this guy and, and these guys don't do damage yet. So you know, that's just one of those things that I haven't got into. So. Right now, we just have that, and we have our pawn sensing. It's the only thing that's in this guy. And let's actually look at how I did the spawner. Because the actual minion spawner itself, I set it to where you can actually change the number right there. So if we come in here and look at the minions, minion spawner. Okay, so there's a hell of a lot in here, as you can see. So, the minion spawner itself is, well, if you look at the viewport, all you've got is just a um, a box collision. And then in your event graph, you create a custom event called spawn minion. And then get all actors of class. You've got, um, which actually, I'm going to go ahead and close this. And I'm going to duplicate it. And I'll show you what I mean. So, we're going to go ahead and duplicate that one. And I'm just going to call this a Raptor Spawner and move that in with the Raptor folder. So, our Raptor Spawner. So, we're going to modify this to actually work with him. Um, get all actors of class is the first thing we're doing after our, our custom event. Let's actually change that to Spawn Raptor. So our, that's our custom event, no replication needed. So get all actors from class, and what we're going to do here is I'm going to change the get all actors of class to Raptor test. So you get from your other or from your out actors, you just get a length node, and that's just right there, length. And what I've done is I've created the max spawn variable. And the reason why I did that is now I can set, like right now, it's 2. Um, you can set it to be 50, whatever. You can now change this because I clicked this little eyeball right there. 
I can edit that in the actual uh, map itself. So we want to see if the number of these guys is less than the max number spawn uh, spawnable, which is two. If there's less than two, then we want to go ahead and here true. We want to spawn AI from class, not spawn actor from class. Because if you spawn an actor, he's not going to have the AI controller built in. And I'm still using a default AI controller at this point. So the pawn class that I'm actually going to spawn needs to be what I'm going to spawn, which is my raptor, the raptor test. He's not the final one. And the behavior tree, I'm not changing anything because I'm using a default um, um, AI behavior tree. Spawn volume is what I called my box collision. If you look, that's just a box collision. I didn't rescale it. It's just the original size. I just called it spawn volume. I drug in a reference to that. I get my world location and plug that in. This right here, the random point in bounding box. And you just type in random point in bounding box right there. Okay. That's going to pick a random spot within inside of your box collision to actually be the location where you're going to spawn. So to get it to pick that, get scaled box event, and that was get scaled. You can see right here, get spawned scale box extent. And since it's coming from the spawn volume, you can actually drag off from here and just type in get scaled box event and just poof, plug it right in. So between this and this is actually going to pick a random location inside that box collision as a location to spawn your freaking um, um, AI. It's, it's simple. But guess what? We got a problem. Oh no. Because I did a copy and paste. It didn't like that, so let's get another link and plug that into here. And we got one more thing we need to look at to get this to work correctly. We have our spawn raptor. I'm going to go ahead and copy the name into my clipboard, you know, copy C or control C so that I, I, I have it. So that's control C. I have it copied and let's compost and save and let's go into our game mode and this is where we want to control the number of actual spawns so I'm going to go into my UI folder which is where I had my game modes go into third person game mode and on event begin play we already have a spawner here so we're going to get all actors of class which was my minion spawner in this case I want to do the raptor spawner we only have one, so it's going to come up as zero. So what I'll do here is I will create the new one to emulate what I've already got by coming in here and running a sequence so that I can split it off. Okay. Now, come down here and get all actors of class. And this is where we're going to do our, our little bits of magic from. And with that, I want to go ahead and get my Raptor Spawner. So, I'm getting the reference to that. I've already got set up in here the minion per second, or let's actually change that to um, spawn per second. How many can spawn every second? And I'm going to leave that at one. Because you, know, you could actually put that at five, and now every second that you need to do a spawn, it'll spawn five. But that can get a little bit weird after time. So we're going to go from get all actors of class, and we're going to get, which is get a copy. And since we're only using the one, we don't need to worry about changing the index number here or the the dimension. It's one. So this right here is the spawner and it's an actual um, I made an actual uh, variable from that but let's see if I can actually use this same one or if I'm gonna need to create a new one so I'm gonna reference my spawner here 
and yeah it doesn't like it so I'm gonna go ahead and change the spawner so minion spawner so that I know that that one is my minion spawner and I need to now go ahead and create a new variable didn't think it would work but I'd try it um, get this promote to variable and I'm gonna call this my raptor spawner and just gonna plug that in so now nice and easy we got everything pretty much ready and now we want to set a timer so we just drag off from here and set timer by function name and that function name is spawn raptor and that's because that's what I named this custom event here is spawn raptor so that's why I copy and paste that into here and the object I'm gonna get the object reference from here one to then set up looping so it will just keep on doing it and we're almost done we just need to set up a time and this is where I come in and we'll do float divided by float and the reason why I have the other one set to three and this is every three seconds or in this case I'm gonna set this one to five because he's a raptor I don't want a shit ton of raptors in here so now from the bottom number we just can plug in our spawns per second we only want one to spawn every five seconds that's it that should be perfect compile and save and now if we go into our map we have the minion spawner which is up there and I'm gonna go ahead and get a raptor spawner go to my raptor raptor spawner drag it into the map and you can see it's just a little tiny thing right there well I want my raptors to only spawn over here so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna just set it in the map and I'll scale it up a little bit that's good and I only want you to spawn in that area so by doing that you're setting up the location this is the only spot where they can spawn and for grit you know shits and grins we'll make them to where they fall into the map you don't have to but you know coolness factor so you I don't care about you bah, you're out of here and now if we look at it we have our minion spawner we only are, are gonna have two coming in here and if we go to our raptor spawner we're only gonna have two of them as well so I had hoped for a challenge let's see what happens there's minions and there's a raptor and they're coming to try to eat me so that's that that's how you can make an easy little oh shit there's two raptors thankfully these guys don't do any damage right now so I'll set up a cool little particle effect for them once the the 10 seconds is up and it destroys the actor you set up a little particle effect on that so that's so simple to do um, creating it and actually let's go in here and wrap your spawner when it spawn I want something to happen I don't want to just pff, and they're there let's actually give them a particle effect or something that will actually say hey you turn knuckles I'm here so let's go to effects and particles we've got all kind of different particles um, if you look in the buffs this is one for buff black and that's the raptor buff black 2 he has a spawn right there apparently he has a spit attack and a drool I didn't play Paragon so you know all right compile your shaders so I don't know what all these things have for attacks so I'm assuming a raptor or some little lizard monkey like this is gonna bite and you know apparently he has a spit attack too so at some point I'll start doing the the bite attack and the uh, the spit attack I want to see what this spawn thing looks like Hurry up, damn shaders all right well that's that's all of his shaders okay it just some little particles it's not as cool and shit as the other ones 
but since I have it selected right now, I will come in here and I will do um, spawn emitter. Let's do it at location. What's up, buddy? I don't know. I'm thinking doing it attached so it stays on them. And the emitter, so we already have it selected, I can just hit the arrow there and it plugs it right in. The component that I want it to attach to is going to be... Um, you know what? No. I'm just going to... I'm just going to do it at location because I would then have to bring in a reference to the actual um, Raptor itself and spawn emitter at location will suit just fine. And the location we're going to use this same location here because it's also going to be where they're spawning from so I'm just going to plug that into there and poof, there we go. So that should now whenever the raptor spawn into the map Young with my lovely folks, little yes. teach you them. That would annoy the crap out of me having to deal with that every time. So you can see there's a little bit of a particle whenever he dropped down there. So let's kill these little lizard donkeys and um, yeah, I'm feeling a bit better than I was sneaking behind these guys. Oh no, more spawn. Here comes a raptor. Oh no. I've seen movies before. When people ask why I don't watch as much TV, it's because, you know, watching TV and movies is, is a good way to relax with company, but no. Oh. Oh no, more raptors. It's a matter of you're watching a linear story. You have no control over it. For me, playing some games that have a good storyline and all things going on is to me better because I can now control the action and what's going on on the screen. Alright, so this is going to be a never-ending spawn system. You know. I'm sure you could set up a, um, a checkpoint system like you get to a certain point and it spawns this number of creatures. But with the um the pawn sensing ah, get off me, bastards. Yeah, you can set up a way of, of turning off the spawners or destroying the actor and to actually remove it from the actual scene. So he he doesn't see me, that's why he's not coming towards me. There you go. Come on, let's play. So if I don't want two raptors to be in here in the map, let's just go to my raptor spawner and I'll set it to one and hit play again. I had hoped to so now I should only have one raptor in the uh, the scene. Keep referring to it as a scene. So you get a little particle effect. Um, I like to have a sound to go along with it, like a roar or something like that. Yeah, this is a um, project I'm working on for somebody else. Is trying to get the basics done for the minion spawners, the animation starting, get everything started on it, and then refine it from there. So, But it was his choice to use the... Um, the minions and shit from here. Yeah, that was actually a good tutorial. I mean, I watch a lot of people uh, tutorials. It's essentially it's the same thing that he did in there. I don't like these characters though. I don't know if it's the player character itself that I, I, I'm choosing to use. I, or, you know, for this project, but that, um, texture pool thing is just, there shouldn't be that much built up in the frickin' texture pooling for just one character. Did I break my raptor spawner? Nope, there he is. Um, I get the spawn time, like, five seconds. Plus, he lays her dead for quite a while. Well, you wouldn't think that this character would be that poorly put together that the textures on him is that shit, you know? To where it just really 
the texture pool, the streaming pool. Yeah, I don't like the, the method of doing damage on these, so that will be corrected later. See, I'm stuck in this dude's corpse until he despawns. So with that being the case, knowing that that is the case, then on death sequence, I should probably go ahead and set it up to where it turns off the... Um, No, I'm still doing my main project. Um, this is just something I'm doing for somebody else. He wanted to know how to do certain things and have certain things set up, but for me to actually release this for myself, um, this using this main character is really poorly optimized character. And believe it or not, this right here, and this is not the map that's actually used in the in the packaging build. So I should go to that other map, but it's just a tiny map that I set up just to have a place for characters to spawn and shit, and yes, yes, save all, and I'll throw the, the raptor spawner in there, was well, this one. So it's just this player character, this little map right here, and what you see, and I'll grab the raptor spawner, and can I actually grab this one, and copy the location. Yeah, it, that Hangout one, and that's, you know, with the, the Polygon characters, a lot of that's going to be part of the primary. Uh, let's see, where's my Raptor Spawner? Raptor Spawner. Drop him in here. Right-click and paste. Then I'll go back to my Minion Spawner, and I can just copy that as well. For my skill. There's no rotation to deal with. Hardly now I hit ply. My time. Hit play. If I hit ply, there we got uh, one minion, two minions, one raptor, a third minion, a second raptor. So we got a bunch of shit coming at us. Yeah, texture pool. See, I'd rather have a shooter, so, you know. To me, I wouldn't wouldn't want to. I'm not a hack and slash kind of person. I just I don't like. Yeah, you know, the more I, I mess with this character right here, I just don't like him at all. But it's not my, not my deal. So yeah, I went up to almost one gigabyte on the the texture pulling, but just packaging up this right here so that I could do a quick play test and see if, you know like multiplayer and shit like that. And the only thing that pissing me off right now on the multiplayer on the, thing, the death right there that little last emitter is the only thing that is not freaking replicating in the uh, the death sequence everything else the sounds the little sparkles whenever you hit something which I didn't add that sparkle to the uh, the raptor but see so you get that little spark emitter whenever you actually hit them that works and that's an emitter but, for some reason, whenever you, you finish them off, and they do the death animation, and that last emitter, that last little spawn emitter, the, it's the spawn emitter is what it's called, but that bright flash of blue is the only damn thing that's not replicating. Everything else is replicating just, well, I say just fine. This is all poorly optimized shit, so... Yeah, they're, I was to say, they're so poorly optimized that, you know, I, I just can't see sticking with these characters just because of that. I wanted to use, you know, he wanted to use the Paragon stuff, and he kept bugging me and bugging me and bugging me. Love him to death, but they're just so poorly optimized that it's going to cause problems and that kind of stuff. That's one of the one of the main reasons why, whenever was offered, you know, the idea of doing a, a freaking revitalizing Paragon, whatever it was being nuked. Uh, now I see one of the reasons why they wanted to get rid of it. It was probably such a damn turd to work with. You know, God, yeah, I can imagine. Um, uh, talking with the, the the customer on this project, 
the the idea was thinking about maybe just stripping the weapons off of them and doing that and going to a regular UE4 mannequin and then just doing this as a freaking shooter instead. So I tried some of the shooting characters and the one, whenever you sit there and look at him, as he's holding his weapon out, it's always at an upward angle. So you're going to have to modify the, the skeleton and the, the animation and then everything else to get the the damn thing to point in the right direction so his arm is pointing in the right direction without having to worry about the uh, the aim space and I thought about using that for just as an option as a top down and I just I don't like these characters they look lovely they really do but as I was getting to before this map and all it is is and I'll just I go back in here this character doing this little thing right here and it's, you know, replicated. These two practice dummies. You see, he has a spark effect. Falls over. Does his respawn. You got a sound emitter. A particle emitter for the fire. The model for it. This big model here. Leave me alone, Raptor. I don't like you. And the same thing is over there. Now, I didn't even put any blocking volumes in. So if you fall off the edge, you just fall out and, and go through the world. I didn't even put any damn blocking volumes in. But just this little map like this right here, uncompressed, whenever I did a, a packaging build for development mode, was 1.5 gigabytes. And if I was going to release this onto, um, like, HIO, they've got a 1 gigabyte limit. And once you pack it up into a RAR file, yeah, then it's under a gigabyte. But if only this was 1.5 gigs extracted... What the hell? By the time I add in here um, eight different kinds of um, dominions, and then the raptor, and then you go into a boss fight, and all that shit, and yeah. Lazier, yeah. It's not a matter of one, being lazy or not, it's a matter of just the, the characters are, are too poorly optimized. And yes, I'm going to use other assets whenever I'm doing something like this because it, everything is based off of the amount of effort versus income. And if I know that I was getting a large income out of this, then I would go through a lot more effort. You know, I would actually go into to Blender and start screwing with the models and shit like that. But, you know, for a low to no paying project that's even you know one done out of courtesy for a friend uh, I might spend 20 hours a week doing it like this oh it's a, no I just hadn't and anyway, wait a minute okay I know you're picking on me and giving me shit but I know somebody who put their game on game jolt and a forgot to do a lighting build and B forgot to put a blocking volume in also. I wonder who that is. Huh. <laughs> so I know why you're picking on me. Because I've seen you do it too. <laughs> but I haven't I haven't released it yet though. But yeah, blocking volume is, is easy to put in. Um, shit, if I wanted to be really lazy, I'll put the blocking volume underneath the walking area. So it would be at this level right here. So that if you do walk off the edge, you're just standing out in the middle of nowhere. Yeah, I didn't catch that at first, because I'm kind of tired today. I'm not sure what I mean by being lazy with a blocking volume. Um, grab one, stick it in here at um, 0, 0, and 0. It's going to lower it down just a little bit. And I'm just going to rescale it. Like so. You don't talk about being lazy. This is how you can be lazy with a blocking volume. Drag that sucker in here like this. And it's just below ground level. So you're actually if you walk off the edge, yeah. 
Well, I've seen some of your stuff, and the more you, you get into your um, to doing your your animations, the more time you spend on, it, the better you'll get. Yeah, just being totally lazy with my blocking volumes here. This is being lazy with a blocking volume. So yeah, this is... Yeah, I've actually done a little bit with making um, anims right inside of um, UE4. Mostly, I've just gone in here and just tweaked an animation to um, to to do the the keyframes and key and apply and just little things here and there to um, just make minor changes. Because most of the time, you know, that's that's all I've really needed. It's just subtle changes. You know, you're you got a good start with your your little movie that you sent me the link to. Um, you're on the right track. So the more you do these things, the the better you're going to learn them, and you're getting there. You're getting there. And the key thing is, is um that you have fun doing whatever you're doing. If you're not enjoying what you're doing, then go do something else. And you know, even if I'm not making the latest, greatest, coolest AAA title, and it doesn't look all that great. Screw it. If I'm ha if I have fun with the project, then I'm okay with that. It's like you know, I really, really like having sex, and even if I'm not really good at it, I don't give a shit as long as it makes me happy. You know, isn't that what really counts? All right, so that is the laziest damn blocking volumes ever. Young pups, I shall teach them. So if I decide, hey, hey, I'm gonna come over here and just jump off of this. No, <laughs> that's just being totally lazy with blocking volumes. Absolutely lazy. If I cared about this map, I would actually go through and actually do a good blocking volume, but. But I know that I can step over here, and their their nav mesh bounds doesn't include this section here. No, it isn't. It's all entertainment. No matter what you're doing, if it if it isn't fun, why are you doing it? Yes, I did. Oh no! The hell are you walking outside here? You are not allowed in here. This is my safe zone. This is my little happy spot. So now you're dead floating in outer space. But yeah, that's just quick lazy. I, I don't care about this map. This is not going to be a, a permanent map. I was just testing a few things out with this. But, you know, packaging up this project, I mean, holy crap, you know. Minion spawner, spawning four. Raptor, I am spawning two. What's happening, man? Need to go ahead and clean up my map a little bit. Um, you guys can't see what I'm doing because my face is in the way here. But um, volumes create another folder called Map Shitola. I guess I could always do this. Temporarily turn off the camera so you can actually see what I'm doing. So I'm creating um, folders up here so that I can come in and you know, like, have a folder for my blocking volumes and that kind of stuff. Normal map shit like this and landscape gizmo. I don't even know why I even still have... I don't even have landscape in here. I don't need you at all. Fog, um, light source, sky sphere, skylight, things like that. and can go into a map shit folder. And just clean up your, your act. Get your stuff together. And... Mm, 
create folder, and we'll do this one called um, emitters. So I got this guy, this guy, this guy, this guy, and that's good enough. And I can create another folder just for spawners. So if I add more spawns in here, or more spawners instead of just spawns, then I, ha I have a location for them. I have a folder that if I want to go back to them, I can just come to this folder and like, there they are. So everything stays neat and organized. And um, for now, I'm going to throw my target dummies into the spawners. Um, but yeah. Keeping everything neat and organized when you're doing your map stuff or your blueprints or whatever else, it just better in the long run. Props. The nav mesh can go into volumes. Yeah. All these can go into props. And that leaves me with player spawns. Player starts. So everything's neat and organized and put into folders named so that I can come back later and be able to pick through them. So I know what's where. I hope everybody learned a little bit of something in here. Because um, if nothing else, let's go ahead and save all, save selected. Let's go back to my regular test map. And I should do the same thing in here as well. Just create a new folder called Map Shitola. And this is the frozen room. I, I like this one. This is a great little test map um, thing to use because you get this big ass bowl you can work with, and it's got a grid laid out inside there, and it's already it's got reflections. It's got cool stuff in there. So I'm gonna put all this stuff in here. And spawns. And you need to go into map shit. Oh, you can go into spawns. <sighs> nice and neat and organized. So this is a good way of testing things out, having a test map to work with. And this is actually good enough. You see, we got our main protagonist here. Throw him into the map. Spawn raptors, and we got minions spawning in. Got things that want to kill you, but I haven't set up any damage on them just yet. But just wanted to showcase what I've gotten done. And this is maybe at best about two to three hours worth of work. Mostly just trying shit and refining it a little bit here and there. Realizing what I don't like, which is pretty much everything. And, um, yeah. So we, want, we got our death. We want to. A different effect whenever he actually dies. I turned it off so you could see what I was doing over here in the um, the upper corner. So I just wanted to, to show you guys what I was doing up there. I always forget that I've got the camera there and then as I'm like well you come over here and you look at this and I'm pointing out stuff that's there and you can't see deadly squat because well you know I'm pointing out something in an area that you can't see because all of my beautiness is in the way. All right, so what was I doing here? I was going to do a emitter when the raptor dies and and despawns. Raptor, 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 and blueprints. Okay, well, let's put the raptor where he belongs in here with his freaking raptor stuff. No, that's a zombie folder. I had a zombie folder in here because at first I was starting this project off doing something different and then yeah, he decided that that wasn't good enough and later on I can divulge what I was talking about with that one but uh, I was setting up a different style game to where one of the features is whenever you're, you're low on health and you just killed a, a bad guy you walk over and you can scavenge their corpse by eating their flesh so um, so yeah, we got all this stuff here, and right before destroy actor, I want to add in a another particle effect, 
and his begin play uh, I didn't put one in here it's actually in the spawn I believe okay so I will just spawn emitter at location is good enough and I'm just going to do respawn nope spawn because I like that one um, minion spawn I think is what it was but we want the same one for what is jungle minion spawn we want the one from black buff or buff black spawn effects blue buff babies yeah screw it let's try this one um, the location let's just get a reference to our mesh get world location There's a lot of potentially cool shit with these Paragon assets. Yeah, I know. Withholding comments. Hardly worth my time. Exactly. So, spawn me a donkey. There we go. Alright, so he dies after his cooldown period of sitting there dead on the ground. I need to shorten that up a little bit. It's a little bit too long. Poof. ED spawns. So let's shorten up that at time. Ten seconds is too long. Let's just drop it in half to five. Alrighty then. I had hoped for a challenge. So. Everything else to this point is roughly successful on things. And you see we got it. Those wouldn't be the, the final sounds that would stay on these things, because that's actually the same ones that I set up for using on these guys. Sweet nut axe. So you get the, the the respawn is just like a dust puff of dust that comes up. Whereas these guys get that bright flash. Same thing with these guys. It was actually their spawn is their spawn is that bright blue flash. So kill this guy, run back over here so we can see in the sky. I don't even like the camera angle. See he has that bright blue flash, and then he just appears and drops down into the world. So that's cool. Works for me. All right, anybody want to see anything else about the spawner before I kick out of this video? We're at the we're just past the one hour mark, so but like the spawner system is essentially just you know this main portion here. The only thing that's really in here is just your your box collision, which I call the spawn volume. Um, you can call it whatever you want, and that's the the tutorial that I watched to make it, and that's what he called it. Yeah, it can be. I mean, it, it's one of those things where it's like with the 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 raptor whenever he despawns, you know. And this is where's death stuff. I don't have it fully set up in here. Um, but like this right here, the that last emitter whenever he dies and and goes away, everything else will work. And I don't have this one replicated or anything yet, but. Like the uh, the minion. I don't need the raptor right now. And then inside the minion, whatever. Handling all this stuff right here. The death, whenever it goes through, it's just set on a multicast. And is dead, is replicated as well. Um, it stops the character movement, that's fine. The, um, the do once is in there, but it plays this sound this sound plays just fine you know getting reference to to the mesh for the location 
That sound plays perfectly fine, but this emitter does not. It does not spawn this freaking emitter at all. But everything else in this, this death sequence right here, which is reliable and multicast, everything else in here is working just fine. It plays the sound, but for some reason, I'm going to have to go back in there and rearrange things because only this one is not working in replication. And I have that problem with particle effects quite often. Um, begin play, that's this effect whenever it first comes in. You know, it's not a bad idea. I've, I have seen a lot where that's actually an issue. Because it's trying to spawn the emitter. And it worked for the on the um, the server. No problem for this emitter. You see the emitter. But I don't know if maybe like I had three tenths of a second in here. And if you, you run it on the client, the client just never sees this, but everything else works. But I guess since you're destroying the actor, you're destroying everything that's here already. So run two new pie. Young pie had worth my time. Challenge. So the um Yeah, there you go. Yeah, it's just annoying as crap sometimes. Even if I didn't have a destroy actor, I've seen that shit work like that, where it doesn't want to do the um, the emitter. It's like yeah, I didn't, I haven't set up the replication on on the uh, the raptor yet. That's just a quick build that I haven't finished yet. But the damn thing is so jerky. The movement is really jerky. You can see it's kind of sputtering. You can see the raptor doesn't do all of his death stuff because I haven't set it up in there. And this one, the uh, the death, I said as a multicast event. I don't even have this even in the um, the raptor yet. Um, so yeah, there is no no death event. So essentially what I would want to do is just come down here and like I was doing in the minion, create a custom event called death and another one called injured and they're both they're both multicast. So I'm gonna just come down here, do custom event, call this death. Yeah, well, I've, and that that fixed that one, but you know I've seen where other shit was like random times we're trying to replicate something and then just that one thing won't work and yeah. So we'll do the same thing we did there. Grab all of this stuff. We don't need to copy it, dumbass. We're moving it. We're not copying it. I don't know why I do that. I I, I break something to, to bring it down and put it into a, a custom event, and I was like, well, you know. It's compost, save, and we'll run death. So that should at least get him replicating for for all that. This sh doesn't need it. That um, should be. So death is running that way. I haven't had to worry about doing the event any damage on the AI characters. It seems to work pretty well without having to do it because that actually runs on server. Authority only, event only fires on server. It just seems to work, you know. Whereas here, I want to come in here and do a, I'll do a injured, and I'll just create the custom event, injured, even though I don't have anything to put in here just yet. So what I would end up doing is, let's multicast that also, make sure it stays reliable, compile, and save. So anything that I build off of here 
will now run whenever I hit the character and don't actually kill it. So I can run this off of the faults here and injured right there. So now whenever dude dies, he does this. But if he didn't die, then you're going to do that. Um, Yeah, that's the thing is the lo the longer you do this, and the more you mess with it, the more you push yourself into learning things, the more you can learn. So you got hit reactions. If I want to add a hit reaction in here, I would probably just go ahead and do like um, was hit and set was hit to true. I need oh, we need a better way of doing it this way though. Because whenever you do it like this, you've got to basically just and John, what the hell is a better way of doing this? Um, I'm just wanting to trigger the animation blueprint to run an animation. What I've had to do is just she like do this as this. I was hit, and then you know do whatever else you know like sound files and emitters and like for right now I can do um, spawn emitter attached and I'm just gonna hope that it actually is going to the right spot because I'm not gonna worry about pulling out the um, the actual freaking um, skeleton to make sure that I'm I'm sure that it has head I'll come back and fix that point later but I want to spawn yeah whatever I'll just use that one we just want to spawn something you know so we can see that we actually hit the uh, the dude but with the was hit I want to trigger it to actually trigger the animation blueprint and what I've done here is normally if you think about the hit reaction on it Yeah, I know you you do all that, and, I, and I'm I'm sticking with for right now animations to fall down dead, and then you're in a dead pose, and then you can return from that or just despawn or whatever else. Um, but the animation itself, which I need to find, buff animations. So hit reaction. Just see, okay, we, we've got a hit reaction there. So I'll come back in and I'll use that one. But, shit, the whole point of doing that was the mouse over it. So 1.433 seconds. And what I would probably end up doing is like, um, just run a delay, do it for one second. The shorter time than the actual animation plays. And then turn it off just a, a quick trigger to show hey I was hit now I'm no longer was hit but there's got to be a better way of doing this to trigger the animation blueprint because that it works sometimes you got to screw around with too much other stuff to get it to to sync correctly and this is not even the final animation blueprint I got a lot of shit to fix in here as well um, I mean this is all I've, I've put in here for now and I don't even need the is in air. That's just a, a copy over from the player character because he's not jumping. So I don't need to worry about that. So that's all I needed was that. And we've got our dead meat. It's the only thing that we've got in here so far. Um, got hit. And I'll just... We'll run a sequence here. Just split this off. Whether it's necessary or not, I'm still going to do it. But so I'll just stretch that off and then drag down here and set. Got hit.
Uh, what the hell I call that shit? Get was hit. Plug that into there. Shits and grins. Let's make sure this is replicated. Um, so yeah, get was hit. Plug that in there. Same basic thing we did there. We're just saying, hey, yeah, we just got hit. And then... Yeah, and it's not a bad thing to do, and I could probably just create an animation montage, and I have mixed results with it sometimes, and yeah, I'm still trying to learn animation blueprints more, and I, I, I don't spend much time on them, so I'm trying to push a little bit more of what I'm actually doing. Hit reaction... Good enough. What the hell is that? Um. Um. Not really. I. I don't. I mean, I've got it open all the time, and thankfully, right now, I don't have any freaking douchebags that are spamming the shit out of it. I've tripped down a lot of the other stuff. Yeah, I'll probably work on that a lot more, John, because I mean I need to. Um, I haven't been pushing myself to learn as much as I could lately. I've just been doing shit that I know, and I'm not getting the most out of what I'm actually doing. No worries, you know. Get with me later. I mean, um, bump your status back to where you were before. Really, this is just a trigger. And get back into the idle stage, I would assume. Um, I run like so. But I'll probably do that on the montages. Uh, whenever I'm just sitting here testing things and screwing around and whatnot. Um, so that's good. That's... That's good. We've got the animation there. And... I guess I... I screwed up enough, and I actually need to push myself, like I said. I screwed up enough messing with montages that it just... It... Left me a little gun-shy. Um... Yeah, you can just go back and testing it Young overall folks, first. I shall teach them. But then I'll start working on the other projects like this and I'll see shit that I like. What in the immortal fuck? He just vanished whenever I hit him. Well, I just killed him too fast. His health was only set to a hundred, and each hit with this um blade is between 50 and 100. Yeah, that's... That's shit there. Um... I don't know if it was because I did this, but something broke in between there, and he actually just vanished whenever I hit him. So... I don't... What did I change on a friggin' minion? I don't remember changing anything on you. Um, on the Craptor. Injured. Man, I don't even need that. Because that's just going to be the, um, the emitter of getting hit. You know, the, like the, the splash of him getting hit. And then animation and we'll do montage but I are not leaving you there you go up here in your raptor folder it's 
that's his little I just got popped in a freaking jaw montage and let's try this play animation mo montage that was you play and rate um, um, target self but are you going to be one of those selfs that uh, doesn't like being a self? I had hoped for a challenge. Yeah, yeah, come on. I probably should up his um, health a little bit because he's dying a little bit too quickly. <laughs> Yeah, let's let's raise his health up because he's just dying too quick. We'll give him two hundred and fifty health. He should have more health than those little crappy little minions. Hardly worth my time. All right, we'll test this out and just to, to see what the hit reactions are doing. Did I even plug it in? I don't even think I even plugged the damn thing in, did I? Injured. Yep, it's right there. Okay, got the dead in there. Um, see, I told you it was crap at doing this. Um, let's see. I had hoped for a challenge. Yeah, I hate that startup sequence. It's cool the first time you do it. Like, oh, that's cool. There you go. You know, and the, the hack and slash and shit looks kind of cool. Fucking give me a damn pistol. Give me a 9mm. Give me an AR-15. Give me something. Give me a shotgun. Give me a damn sniper rifle. Anything but hack and slash shit like this. Probably set also the um, move to locator. Except the radius is zero. I didn't put that in there. So let's actually put it as 50 instead of negative one. I don't want him trying to hump my damn leg. I just want him to get close enough. That way, whenever he goes to attack, he can lunge forward and do his attack or whatever else. But. There, he's not trying to hump my freaking leg. He's actually standing behind me a little bit. He probably changed that, that distance. Let's try it at 100. I don't like it whenever they, they're they trying to stand in the same exact freaking location in the world. Alright. There. That's good distance, right? I'll probably go back and do a hit reaction for the minions. Get off me. Get off me, you bastards. So let's change the, the distance on these guys as well. And it's not too bad, but they're right up on top of me. I'll change that distance. No, I don't do other people's discords. I've got a metric ass ton that I've already got on Discord, and adding any more, I don't have room for them right now. I just got the active ones that I actually go to on a regular basis. In fact, I actually have some of them on there I need to get rid of because I don't go to. Um, and for flipping sake, Kinematic Soup! Damn you guys, hurry up with that freaking beta and get my ass in there. If you don't know what Kinematic Soup is, it it's, um, looks like it's going to be an awesome way of 
getting developers to working on a project together, you're working on the same project live at the same time. So if we're working on a map, um, four people, we could be in here adding things into the same map at the same time in real time. It sounds amazing, but I guarantee there's going to be an annoyance factor without proper communication. So, uh, What was I doing? I was going to the... Um, Minion, Minion test, and on his, uh, do, 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 there, this guy, we're changing that negative 1.0 to 50, and let's see if that opens up the, the gap a little bit more, but yeah, I don't do a whole lot of discords, because I'm not going to pay attention to them, and honestly, if I join, and I'm not active, and you're trying to talk to me on that one, and there's notifications going on. I hate notifications. That's not too bad. On distance away. That's why I hate when people use mentions. I don't care so much while we're in this because I don't see it any different. If by you putting an at symbol in front of my name, it's not going to make me see it any better while I'm in the um, the. Well, I can show you. Is um using Streamlabs and looking at this this is the chat that I see and I don't see mentions any different than regular stuff so using a, a mention in here is just wasting your time it doesn't bug me because you're like I said you're only wasting your own time but whenever somebody sends me a, a mention in discord the little freaking discord icon will have a plus one it'll it'll look different and it's distracting when you're old and have as many Freaking OCDs as I have, so I hate whenever you get some people. And I, I try not to use the everyone mention unless I'm trying to get everyone's damn attention. But I try not to get carried away with it. Young pups. I so I don't you. like mentions. I don't like notifications. I don't have any notifications on my phone except for incoming phone calls and text messages. I don't want freaking Google Maps sending me anything. I don't want. Yahoo doing anything. I don't want anything doing anything. I don't want your me messages. I don't want your damn notifications. I don't want any of that stuff because it distracts me from what I'm doing. Alright, so they're doing damage. Everything should be working correctly. Um, let's save this one. Let's go back to the ice test map because that's the one that I actually have in the, the packaged build. And oh my god, it, this alone is hardly worth my time. Hardly worth my time, just like he said. But I got these target dummies in here. And they die and replicate the way they should be. This is freaking damage is gonna bug me. I guess I could turn up their pawn sensing range a little bit. It covers for the most part, but when you're back here, they don't always see you. And before I add any damage to these guys, I want to make sure I turn off damage on the player. You see, what in the immortal fuck? That's what I'm saying. Is it, it, these assets are just so freaking shit. Um, I don't know. They haven't got the, the next beta ready yet. Um, it may be um, another six months to a year before we actually see a, a release build. The beta is free, and I, I don't think they're going to have a free version of Kinematic Soup. So it's probably going to be a paid asset, but during the, the beta testing, it, it's liable to be free. Well, it is free, but... See what I'm saying? These assets cause a lot of problems. This shit's crashing at random. and But I have this map is actually in the the packaging version. Hardly worth my time. And why the Okay. I forgot I had three spawns in here. One here, one here, and one here. So that'll be good enough for testing. I will get with the the gentleman who is responsible for this headache. Uh, 
and I will package up a version of this version right here. I am, you know, just as a test to to let him see what it looks like after a little bit of fiddle farting around. I would rather do shooting than slashing hack and slash. But, you know what? That's good enough for now. I'll see what he says and what he thinks, and if he likes what's going on, then I'll refine a few more things and make the damage system and crap like that. That's up to the, um, the person I'm doing this project for. If he says, okay, it doesn't matter, then I'll pump it out. Oh, the, the soup thing? It's, it's kinematic soup. I don't have the link for it. Um, it is... Well, it's spelled with a K. Uh, let's see here. I... For Unity, there's a... The, a version out for for them. Um, but I will grab the um, URL to their YouTube thing, and I'll link it in my general in Discord. That should work. All right, I'm getting out of here. I, I try to keep these videos no longer than an hour, and I'm at an hour and thirty six minutes. So. If you guys want me to do more on this project or, or show more of, of things like this, let me know. Um, as it stands, I really don't like using these um, Paragon assets because they're so poorly optimized that they just load up the system. So I have a total of, for, for this project, I have exactly what you see. I have this character. I have UE4 Mannequin. I have one minion that spawns. I have one raptor, one other uh, minion that spawns. I have just a fire emitter, a sound emitter, and just what you see here. And for me to package this up in my, with my simple multiplayer Steam template, so that's actually a playable version where you can actually do it in multiplayer and that kind of stuff too. This uncompressed is just over 1.5 gigabytes. And that's a little bit too much. Whereas this same shit with the polygon characters in it would have been 160 megabytes. Yeah, I'll probably stream again later. Um, take a break. I might actually eat something and I'll try to get in touch with the, the person that I'm doing this for. And actually, I'm going to have to upload this version so he can actually play it. And tell me what he thinks or I'll just do a, a chat with him. But for, I don't know, uh, two, three hours of just throwing shit together, that's not bad. Not bad. Not bad for an old guy. But I, it's just these characters are going to bug the shit out of me. It, it really honestly would not hurt my feelings to rip all of the... Um, and the only other character I've got in here is Richter. But i got Richter, the Minions, Fang Mao, and Infinity Blade... Icelands is the only assets that I have in here besides my simple multiplayer team template. And for this little bit of nothing to be one and a half gigabytes, that's not no bueno. That's um a little too much going on. But let me get out of here. Let me go eat something and I'll probably stream a little bit later on. I'll throw some other stuff in here. I might do some of this with um Infinity in Infinity. Infinity Blade characters as opposed to these guys, but one of the problems I'm having is I actually had too much stuff on my primary C drive, so I've been pulling some of my projects off of my C drive, putting them on my, my F drive, which is my UE4. So says all this shit and these autosave. Autosave I hate with a passion. Uh, there's all these other crap that I got going on here. These projects and all these assets, they're clogging up my freaking hard drive, especially when I don't use them. And I generally go through and with all those friggin' assets, I will start doing, um, like, the ones I'm not using. Like, action RPG, cool to look at, but I, um, you see the arrow isn't lit up there, 
because I have removed the, the content. So you can see on all these things here, if I want to add this one, you can see I've done remove local content on almost all of these, trying to to save space on a one terabyte hard drive. I've got all my primary games from Steam and from Uplay and all that stuff is actually on there as well. And just one terabyte hard drive is just not enough. So I've got uh, another two and a half terabytes worth of other hard drives. So I'm trying to move shit off of the primary drive onto secondary drives. But I may actually look at like the um, Infinity Blade a Adversaries, Warriors, um, and l look at doing the... Um, the Infinity Blade assets instead of the um, the ones from Paragon. I just these Paragon ones. I just think they're too poorly optimized, so that that's causing problems. And there's some cool spooky shit in here that we can work with too. But um, it changes the the feel and the theme a little bit of the projects. I don't know. Like I said I will talk to the guy I'm doing this project for and see what he says, but. This is what I got. I'm going to start this packaging and get out of here. I don't like mentions. And what happens, somebody immediately does a mention right there in Discord. As you can see, it throws up a number right here. And that annoys me. And it actually distracts me from what I'm doing. I don't like mentions. That's why they're banned on my Discord server. Because I have my OCD problems and it annoys the crap out of me. So don't use a fucking mention. And what do you do? You do another fucking mention. So obviously this person's automatically looking for um, a server ban. Because the same person just used three mentions in a row. and it takes me away from what I'm doing. Yeah, and then people get pissed off whenever they... You just did it a fucking again. When you go to somebody else's fucking Discord channel, Read their goddamn welcome pinned messages and things like that. Then if you look for server rules, um, it's right there, you know. Learn to, to pay attention to what the hell's around you. So, yeah, see, I, I've just wasted five minutes of your guys' time. All right, well, yes, yeah, so keep you out. Let me um, get a quick um, breather. Talk to me on, on the dev chat, and um, bye, motherfucker. I just sent him a link to the fucking um, um, the server rules. I told him that using mentions is bannable. So, goodbye. And welcome to ban. God damn, people are stupid. I tell you, don't use frickin' mentions with my name in it on my Discord channel. Doing it once, I'll warn you. Doing it second time, I'm gonna be pissed. Doing it a third time, you're getting banned. That's it. Pff, gone. Banned right off the bat. And it's probably that fucking troll from the other night, so, you know, I don't care. If you think you're going to troll my freaking YouTube, I, bl I banned you. you think you're going to troll my freaking um, um, Discord channel, then that's not going to happen either. So, welcome to Blocksville, Bansville, and everything else. And I'll do that with every one of your shit and fucking characters you create. I don't give a shit. Don't fucking troll me. I don't have time for your bullshit. This is why I have to keep wasting my time dealing with fucking trolls and other shit, and I don't get to work on my own projects or other people's projects or anything else. Can't get any work done when I got motherfuckers wasting my time, and my time is money. So, 
I'll talk with you guys later. I love the guys that don't, you know, that come here for the right reasons. So, yeah, keep in touch. We'll be on Discord, and I'll probably do some more streaming here in a little bit. Take care. See you soon.